Okay, so this is the ladder truck, and we're going to go over a few things with it. Now, one of the things that this the ladder truck has is that we have ourselves the red section. This is the upper part of the ladder. It actually extends. On that is a nozzle head. This actually is where you're able to send water through the uh, ladder to wherever the fire is. This is a truck that is mo that is a high-rise fire truck. You can use it for other things because me, like I said in the previous tutorials, me and the other guy I work with a lot, uh, we both run ladder trucks. So, uh, and we work together very well as an effective team. So the uh, so therefore it's not like it's impossible where only one guy runs the ladder truck because sometimes you get it fired in which on a high rise there are two fires that, that are either in front back or on each side and to get the fire knocked out quicker without the uh, rush rush you would just use two ladder trucks and knock it off because that's what you'll be doing and other times we will handle other kind of fires as well but since calls do not specify uh, high-rise fires when high-rise fires are happening the uh, it's usually a good idea to have the ladder truck in the event that you go to a high-rise fire and realize that you actually need it I mean it's just a suggestion it's up to you what you do from there now due to the sheer size of this ladder truck this truck also uses a better lighting system this light takes care of the forward part which is attached to the ladder and then this one here runs the right side I think it's this one is the right and the left okay there's your right ones these would be your left lights this is your aft light. That was one of the reasons why I'm doing this tutorial at the nighttime for this part is because of the lights that are on it so that you can see where they're at uh, and adjacent on the truck. Now, certain things that you need to know is that for the balance of this truck you have outriggers There's one to each side so if you have a spare player and they're running around side the thing this is one of the things that they extra like let's say you got a guy playing the fire chief he could run these and it'll there'll be no interference with it now for you engineers since you are responsible because you being the engineer of any of these trucks, you are responsible for your own water supply hose hookup. It is the best way to go. When you are the engineer of a ladder truck, do not apply this hole first and then set the outriggers. Because the purpose of the outriggers is when this ladder is extended, is stability for the truck. And if you run the ladder without the outriggers, you do run a risk of the truck flipping over because I see where where people will claim that it's a glitchy truck because they're running this ladder and they don't have the outriggers and this thing's like dancing around it's like well I can see one reason why you're having the problem but we do not extend the outriggers when this truck is hooked up to the supply line because when you do that then you have these legs that go into the ground see those aren't seated they're in the asphalt and they'll be like that all the way around and I've seen players go what is going on here that's because the engineer hooked this up first so then the engineer turns around runs over grabs his hose and you get one of these and then everybody's laughing well of course you hook the hose up in the wrong sequence this hose gets hooked up after you set this up and 
same thing, you don't drop the outriggers when the hose is hooked up to the line. See that? Because <laughs> then you get one of these. And once again, the person grabs his hose. And they're like, what is going on with that? Well, you, you disconnected the hose and connected it at the wrong sequence. So, how do you handle this? First, set your outriggers. Once that is done, come in here, get your water supply hose. And now you can be able to continue forward in your role play in the use of the ladder truck by extending and using the ladder. And you see there's a total of four of these. Now when you go to pack up, because you're done, grab your water hose first. Then go ahead and close out the uh, outriggers. And then you're ready to go. And then there's nothing jumping, bouncing, dumping, flipping over through the air, or any other crazy madness. It's, you know, that's the, you got limitations they're dealing with. The game's updated for bugs every month, so, you know, you deal with the cards you got. And it's not very hard to do that. Now, if you're at a fire where you got a flame high as well as a flame low, and you got one guy using the ladder truck, you can still grab a hose off of here and run a line to take care of the fire that's low. Now, when the ladder guy goes up here, this is the controls. These controls make it possible for you to um, bring the ladder back, uh, this runs the nozzle, and this is what makes the uh, ladder work. Now, I use my arrow keys for this. Use I do is I'll set the ladder up so it's kind of like in a partial angle, functionable position. Mainly when I'm role playing because I'm not going to crawl up here. Get up here to the ladder control unit. And then send it up. Now, to make the ladder extend, whatever button uses the turning signal is what handles that. Now, for me, the pedals on my car controller handle my turning signals, so they also control the ladder to extend or retract. Now, when you go to put out a fire, you turn the water on, as well as turn it off. Now, these here, this runs the nozzle to go left and right. This makes it possible to go up and down. Now, since it isn't marked up here, down there, you have to kind of like, yeah, you have to kind of like guess it up as it goes along. So we go left, pull that thing right, make it go up or down, then when you finish, shut it off. Sometimes you have to, when you're not sure about your alignment of where you're dealing with the fire, you have to kind of work with it or either position or raise the ladder as well as turn it to help you out in this case. I mean, you're going to have to do that. That's There's no getting around that. Now, when you're lowering the ladder, you bring it down. You do not get the alignment to the truck perfect. That's okay. Because when you lower this ladder down low enough, you're going to see a green light. Which is automatic set. And it'll take care of the rest. Now, I just wanted to... Uh, throw this out here 
this actually an, uh, is kind of like when if you're running in the chief's car or you're running around anything other than this ladder truck because that is your choice to do that and then the engineer pulls up with his ladder thing I noticed it actually annoys the ladder truck engineers now usually I don't say anything because the way I look at it person doesn't know how to use the truck they want to explore it try it out for themselves but other players they tend to get annoyed and whatnot it is rude to be jumping on their truck and taking over the ladder control in the attempt to put out the fire because you got that rush rush thing or point syndrome thing that you completely taken over the truck the engineer of the ladder truck is not responsible for bringing the truck so that he could drive it set it up so that you could be the one to run it the engineer runs the truck and he gets up on the ladder and he puts out the fire so you know when you jump up there keep in mind that it's not brought there for you to use it's the the guy that selected the truck is the one that's using the ladder so you know if you want to try it out it is polite to ask hey can can I try that then jump up there and run up there like you are the one is why it's brought because I've had a couple of players that really pushed that issue so <laughs> without them knowing it because so, I'm hosting the games not like I can leave so without them knowing it making a big stink about it I ran over to the police station and changed roles and that took care of the ladder truck for that person and then it, they do what normally everybody does and that's jump off when uh, they can't get their way but um, ask first before running up there on somebody else's truck because you feel your liberty to it because you are not that's the person that chooses the truck is the engineer of that truck and they're responsible for it if you want to do anything if there's a low fire somewhere grab a line tax it to the truck and then go put out the low fire and leave the engineer to do his job other but other than that if you want to try out the ladder my suggestion is ask hey can I can I try out that ladder because the engineer might let you go ahead and do it because like me chances are I'll, I'll let you do it because most people don't know how to use it and here's the opportunity and they just watched how it got set up now if you're EMS or PD you can forget it that's not your job your job is PD or EMS I'm talking to the fellow fire department people so anyways moving on to the next part so when you get to your high-rise fire one of the things you want to try to keep in mind is your best angle attack in dealing with the fire because there'll be some people will be standing around they'll be watching the engineer of a ladder truck standing looking up and he may have the truck set up he may not have the truck set up and then somebody will jump on here because they think maybe the engineer is, is confused he's not confused he's looking at the best angle of the truck because how the truck is positioned the way it sits and what he plans to do is everything when he is about to go into this because if not he may be looking at having to get unpack everything up and reposition this truck so he is looking to see what he is about to run into when he goes to do this and I mean it makes sense because that's what I have a tendency to do so it's not like he doesn't know how to do his job it's he's trying to figure out what is going to be the best angle of attack when he gets into this job because as you can see it's a lot to set up one of these trucks this is probably the uh, most well detailed truck in the entire fleet and definitely one of the uh, longest ones to have to set up or get ready that's why I, there are those that play in the police roles I actually like working with some of the guys that actually know what they're supposed to do they don't try climbing on the ladder or anything else they actually got the roads blocked off at the intersections to prevent traffic from coming in they're on station over there and in the event that the they get a call then they'll pack up and they'll leave but most of the time that is where they're sitting at which is 
where they should be, because that's where they would be. Now, once you're over at the position that you think you are, you gotta remember between going up and down, this nozzle goes only so far. So there's really no point in confusing yourself. So sometimes it is best to just turn the water on to see where you're at in reference to the fire. So here it shows you have to go up. Then we have to go over to the left. We'll probably, uh, there we go, we're on, now we're on it. See what I mean? And that's what you're basically doing. Now, once you hit the uh, last fire, then you go ahead and reposition yourself to what you feel you're going to need to uh, to get it done. Oops. So we have this side that's right here. Sometimes an adjustment of the ladder going forward, backward, raised, or extra, uh, retracted will determine your best angle that you could probably might hit with this hose. So here's an example here. This one is like practically out of reach. So we're going to take this attempt to reacquire by extending the ladder as we move into it. So there you go. That is the usage and what you're dealing with the ladder. That's why it's important to understand, hey, you know, the, uh, there are things that have to be done within the usage and the understanding of the truck because it gets complicated like that. That's why I always say, even in the other tutorials, if you want to use something and you wish to try it out, you know, you need to go in the single player mode if you're doing something that you are not familiar with because I've seen some people be grabbing this truck and they don't know how to use it so they once again they get frustrated and jump off and then complain you know there's nothing to complain about go into single player and find out what it is I mean I understand what's going on it's oh that's so cool I want to try it out because you want to run that and then you'll turn around and run that, and you'll be like, oh, no, I don't think I'm going to do this. This is, uh, there's no way I'm going to do this, because I didn't expect everything else to be involved in it. And that is why you, uh, go into the single player, and you conduct your practice so that you can get good with this. And be more efficient at the usage of the truck that you are going to be the engineer for. Oh, do you see that? Oops. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you go into the single player to you get more efficient at it. Because you may go in there and be running this truck and realize this is too much or you, it's something you don't care to deal with. Um, or you're that guy who has to do everything right. And as far as you're concerned, uh, you keep making mistakes on the truck and you're like, had enough. Now, so instead of a fire call being hung up because you ran off somewhere uh, because things didn't work out the way you planned it just better off going in single player get familiar with the truck until you are good enough to use it or had learned in single player on your own that this is not the truck for you and you just prefer not to even 
You'd rather run around in the chief's car and play chief conducting uh, traffic control than uh, messing around with this thing here. So moving on. Now, this is one of them fires that uh, actually you could use both trucks in combination, whether it's the tanker or a, another lighter truck. Uh, the one partner that I work with that, sh uh, that runs up in here, I'll light candle. We'll sometimes spread it because, like, there's flames that are up here above the um, that, uh, fire station. So he'll pull his truck up and he'll jump on the ladder and even though it's not a very high part of the fire but it'll hit it. In the meantime I'm hitting all this stuff that's all low to get it out. And that's where your teamwork comes in between the vehicles. Whether it's the bumper tanker or the ladder truck. The two ladder trucks. So the, uh, that's just basically one of the things I was talking about when you're using the combination between trucks based on whatever is going on at that moment for that kind of fire. So if I was the chief and I came here, I would request a puffer tanker and a ladder. That's what I would do. Because even though that you're knocking out this stuff low, there is still stuff going on just above this fire line right here. That would be more efficient to have the ladder truck taken care of. As you see, I'm knocking out this stuff that's on the lower end, and it's exposing that there is a fire top side where the um, windows are located at. See what I mean? And even though it's not like super, super high, but you're here on the ground doing one of these, trying to hit it, just be simple for me to put my hose away while my partner on his ladder truck is busy running, hitting these uh, above. See what I'm saying? Because there are some fires that are like that. They're low enough to hit it from the ground, and there's another set of flames that are going on that you're high enough or higher that a ladder truck would be needed. And that's where your little teamwork comes in between the two trucks. So whether it be two ladder trucks or a pumper tanker and a ladder truck combination is useful in these situations. So if there are two ladder trucks and a paint and a pumper truck and I pull up and I saw this and the guy in the ladder truck is setting up to hit this thing on top I usually move, either join the pumper tanker by taking lines off his truck and hooking up to that to hit the low lane fires or I return back to station because there's no need for me to be here. So here's where we're at. So as you see, I'm hitting the top part. Even though that's more, it's not much for an incline to work with, but you know, that's where this thing becomes articulate. This is where the teamwork that I'm talking about comes in. So not always uh, unnecessary. So you know, the when you're busy rushing around, making mistakes, and not working with your teammate, you get people who don't want to be bothered with you. That's why I keep going on about this rush, rush, rush point syndrome thing, because it's it's not about, uh-oh, here he goes, he's going to be preachy. It's, no, that's not what it is. I'm coming across players who are sick and tired of that and are starting to go either from complaints or, or on my server and eventually uh, uh, make complaints about the other server because because of stuff like that. And all you're going to do is eventually just have people who don't want to be on anymore. And then you find yourself always running an empty server and you don't understand why. Because lack of teamwork and rushing is, is a, really a pain, to be honest. And when I mean by teamwork, I'm talking about amongst the uh, group based on what it is that they're doing. So, you know, like if you're the fire department and you're doing your calls with the fire department, if you have somebody who's chosen the ladder truck and they're not setting it up fast enough for you that you decide to take things into your own hands, that's your fault for because uh, you are 
Because if this was the real fire department, I guarantee you, you'd be chucked right off of that. And there you'd be sitting down there. Well, I'm not the part of the fire department before. I don't know what they fired me. Because it's teamwork, working together. Stuff has to be set up and prep. And it is the failure to understand that. And there are players like me that like to roleplay that whole thing. Sure, we don't have to go through all this trouble. Sure, there's no that it may be pointless in doing it because it's just a game but when you rush and you're fasting through everything you, you really take the fun out of playing the game because some people are starting to uh, mistaken that the fact that the lack of players on the servers because of the bugs where in the case a lot of the players are getting tired of the rudeness and uh, this rush 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 thing gotta be done right now or else you know that's not working out for anybody. But uh, anyways, this is the ladder truck. As you can see, there is a lot that's involved in it. That's why this actually really needed to have its own separate video. Um, so when you're busy running this truck, the other thing I remember is that this truck is longer. So it's not going to turn on a shorter base like the uh, tanker. So what you do is, is that, you know, if you want to try out the ladder truck, get up in the single player, practice with it. Become familiarized with the truck so that you can be the best at all you can be in helping out with using the role of the fire department. So you got, like me, I did not know how to use this truck, had no idea what was involved. There was a player I was with and everything was just turned to pot trying to work with them on it because I didn't understand what he was talking about he's like grab this grab that hook up another line I didn't even know what hooking up another line even meant because he's trying to hit one section in the use of the fire and I had no idea what he's doing or what he's complaining about nothing because I had no understanding of this truck whatsoever so really I'm along with the line along for the ride as an observer and the only thing I understand is I grab a hose here and I plug it up here and then I just start spraying and putting out fires that's all I understood I didn't know this other stuff he wanted me to do and I actually kind of felt bad because I'm not that kind of a player you know I don't like being uh, a fifth wheel to the people that I'm playing with on the, uh, in that group. So that's when I decided, you know, I wish I knew a little bit more about this so I could know what I'm doing. I'm glad I ran into those other two players. And I went into the single player and made it my business to learn this truck. Because right out of the gate, I actually think this is the coolest truck in the fleet. And therefore, I thought I'd make it my business to be the engineer of a ladder truck. This is the truck I will always use all the time I fairly rarely grab into that tanker I spend all my time dealing with this ladder so the uh, but that's how I end up getting good at it and that's my suggestion to you that's like the tow truck people getting excited they want to try it that's cool and dandy until they're frustrated had enough and they want to quit and then they're complaining about all the bugs and problems with it and the chances are it was something based on what really happened was is they don't know what they're doing with it and it's not working the way they want it they're confused and they're annoyed and that's how it all happened like I said when you extend this ladder what you use for your turning signals is what extends and extracts this now the reason why I'm saying that is because I got my own keys customized so I don't know what the exact keys are. What I do know is whatever you use for your turning signals is what makes that thing extend and pull back in. Anyways, I hope any part of this tutorial was helpful in the understanding of this truck and its function. And, uh, and I hope that it uh, made it possible where you could actually try the thing out single player and get better at the usages of it. So thank you. And have a good day.